Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelava, and this is Let's Play Greece in Victoria 2, number 12. We left off in the midst of our war against Austria-Hungary, Russia, and a separate war against Germany and their allies Sweden and whatnot. Now, we are just absolutely overwhelming the Austro-Hungarians. They have 69 brigades left to our four and a half, or 440 some odd. Uh, the Russians have 100. However, those could be really anywhere. We haven't spotted too many of them recently. Uh, the Germans, who haven't really been all that active since they don't have military access through Austro-Hungary, have an just outrageous 809 brigades. So they'll be a bit difficult to take on if it comes to it. The Italians are fighting the Austrians as well, so that gives us a bit of support. The Russians are also allied to the Austrians in that war and aiding them in that. So they haven't really been able to provide much resistance against our armies as we've been plowing through their countrysides. Uh, really, we're just getting started on the whole occupation section of the war. Uh, which is probably going to be quite a while in, uh, well, just in duration. So that'll probably be most of what we do for now. Uh, looks like Britain just won a war to take over some more of China. So there we go, British China is that massive thing. And I believe these are even states now, at least that Henan provinces. So that kind of makes them incredibly buffed. Yep, didn't realize that would unpause it. All right. Guess, guess the game's just unpausing itself from time to time. The Italians are trying to cut down the Russian Empire, so that's pretty cool. That helps us out somewhat. Uh, we'll go defend our army against the Swedes right there. And other than that, it looks as though we'll be in a fairly good position. I don't really know what all we'll have to worry about. Other than just moving forward and trying not to provoke the Germans into some massive amount of retaliation. Uh, the reason we're at war with Germany is because German pan-nationalists took over Yugoslavia, which is a pretty weird sentence, I suppose, all things considered. At any rate, we're just kind of moving forward and hoping for the best. We absolutely decimated that Swedish army, and that's not even accurate. Decimated is only 1 in 10. We, we killed about, what would that be, 3 quarters of their military? So we'll just cycle over and destroy them with what we have left. And then it's just a constant wave of occupations. We're not going to try to peace out with the Austrians just yet because we are hosting a bunch of elections and basically just hoping to get uh, up to 6.99 jingoism among our people so that we can actually add an additional war goal. And the plan for that is that we will add a war goal in all of our wars simultaneously. So we're hoping to be at war with Persia when that happens. And that will allow us to add a war goal against Austria. Oh, cool. Russia just accepted peace with the Italians to cut themselves down to size. So that helps us out immensely. What was I about to say? Oh, Germany will make peace with us, just giving us Bosnia, which is all we really want from the Germans. Although it would be an interesting fight. We're, well, we already basically just got what we wanted, so we'll just accept that. And now we can go wheel around and attack the Italians, who really should be the next or second to last uh, okay, either the next or the next after one nation that we declare war on. We'll probably declare war on Egypt. I checked our truce time with them, and we will be able to declare war on them in, I believe, March. So that will allow us to press forward against the Austrians and then the Persians when our war goal is finished, which should just be in a few months now, if even that. Let's see, tons of battles. It looks like there are rebels popping up all over the place, luckily just in Russia. Hopefully that'll lead to the collapse of the Russian state. That would be pretty fine with me. Uh, except maybe if they become fascists, as that could be problematic later on. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just smash into this Russian army and really just hope that it works out for us. They are in the mountains, so it might not, but I don't believe they have defensing and gas attacks, so that's always a tremendous plus. We're making just a really ridiculous amount of money, so we can probably stop taxing our rich nearly so much. And we will go ahead and pay off our loans, which is why we were taxing our people so much, was because of those, and I just forgot to deal with it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open all of our factories and just go ahead and subsidize them simply because it looks like we have a whole ton 
of areas that just have a bunch of people unemployed right now. Uh, worst case, we have a bit of a welfare state for our industry, but that gets our industry score up a little bit, and that's not the worst thing in the world. We have 16 days until our war with Persia is ready. Uh, we'll go ahead and let people in Libya become militant, since it's not as though that really matters. And we don't want to get them uppity about some sort of politics when they are in a colonial territory. And actually, I don't know if they are. They might have been made into a state by the Russians. Or not the Russians, I'm sorry, the Turks. And then we might have taken them over as a state. In fact, I would say that's almost certainly the case. Alright, so nevertheless, we don't really want to worry too much about politics, and we are becoming fascist one way or another. Uh, not so much because I want to, simply because they're jingoistic and also let our and also let us tax our people more than 50%. And those are really the two qualifications for a government that I have right now. Uh, it looks like we defeated an army of something like 100,000 forces. That might have just been 100,000 of our forces, I'm not really sure. At this point, I don't really anticipate very much in the way of, well, just any sort of threat from the Russians, we'll say. Uh, we're not going to support planned economy because, meh, there's no real reason to. And anyway, we'll just kind of go deeper into Austrian territory. And we are just winning all of these battles, pushing the Russians back, pushing the Austrians back. We can go attack the Persians in a moment. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. And we're taking a place in the sun, so it'll just be Persian Turkmenistan, which is way over uh, Turkmenia. So we'll just kind of roll this army to the very end of that. We'll move the rest of our forces forward generally. And hopefully just clean that up pretty quick. Uh, we could probably spend this time justifying against the Italians, although that would take 243 days. Alternatively, I do want us to go after Kashmir. And uh, establishing a protector, it's only 100 days. So that puts us more in line to take over Egypt when we're done. Alright, so we'll just establish a protectorate out of Kashmir, which we already once had, uh, but we're just kind of reinstating that as they uh, had a rebellion and gained their independence, and I wasn't actually paying attention when that happened. It was probably during one of the during the Great War or the Second Great War when the British were heavily involved. I don't know if we can move our armies back since we're not going to be going to war with the Italians for a moment. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get an event that raises our jingoism, that's basically just the overriding goal of the state right now, is get some jingoism, add some war goals. And as long as we're able to add one round of war goals, then I believe we can just achieve all of our objectives for this campaign. Uh, that just has to happen in the next, well during this war, really. Uh, ideally sooner rather than later, because we do want to go attack the Persians, well, up until the point that we annex them entirely, and we can't very well do that if they are allowed to, well, exist all the way. So we need to, we need to declare war, or we need to achieve victory in this war and take two of their states, and we need to do it quickly enough. I really just rambled terribly for a minute there, but we have to take two of their states, basically. We have to take a state of theirs and a colony and then we only have to declare war on them two more times, once for Gileon and the next for their capital. So if we do that in the next four years, then we then we can accomplish everything we're after. Let's see, what do our people want the most right now? Biggest voter issue is censored press. Biggest issue among our people is free trade, but uh, censored press is the first thing that we can actually achieve, so we will go ahead and just censor the press. So go ahead and just take that on, people. Uh, where are our people's desire for jingoism? It's only at about 4.54%. So that's not ideal. We need to get a jingoistic event, or a jingoism encouraging event, in an election. So we're probably just going to host constant elections until we get that. I mean that's really the point of democracy, I suppose. You just keep running it until you get what you want. You get what you want, at least in in uh, in some sort of constitutional monarchy. That is pretty much the goal of those. All right, so it looks like there's German pan nationalists all up in Austria right now, and God only knows we don't want them to win. 
as that would just heavily buff the Germans who are already more powerful than I would actually like them to be. So let's see, go ahead and just click through all of those. We probably don't need to push the Russians any further. We still will, just a little. And then after this we should be fine. The Persians want to make peace with us, I really don't want to make peace with them. We need to add another war goal. I'm just not sure how jingoistic our people are going to become. And that is a concern. In fact, it is the concern. Hopefully jingoistic enough. If we manage to get them to 7 jingoism without having to get some sort of election event, then that- hey, look at that, 10% more in favor of jingoism. Why can I not add a war goal? Okay, there we go, we can add war goals. So yeah, basically that's exactly what we needed, that's everything that we needed. Huh. Alright, so let's see. Let's take a look first of all. Uh, right now we have a 55 war score demand for Croatia. I would also love it if we could get Slavonia in this war. So let's see, Slavonia is only 15, so that's great, we can just take that. Let's make sure I'm getting the right one. Good old Slavonia, we do not want Slovenia. Uh, just because Slovenia wouldn't really help our borders. Alright, so we will go ahead and take Slavonia. We also desperately need Armenia. So add war goal, acquire state. And we will see if we can't find Armenia right now. We'll get Armenia as well. And we'll take Khorasan. Alright, so that'll knock the Persians out. Uh, we probably even still have enough Jingoism. We'll see what it's like in a day. Jingoism is back to 5.75%. Alright, so we managed to get what we needed, and that's really the important thing, and it happened in a moment where... Well, it just happened very quickly. So that's very good news. Uh, everything that we needed to occur, occurred. Uh, and then we can go ahead and propose peace against or, uh, with Austria, although we don't actually want to do that yet. Uh, instead of peacing out with the Austrians, we're going to just sit on their country for a little while longer so that we can just walk through their country into Italy when we declare war on Italy for Dalmatia. Which, actually, we don't need to do because we're going to have Croatia anyway. So, yeah, I guess really we can do anything. We could leave or stay against them against really anyone at this point. Uh, so yeah, we'll just wait until the Persians are ready to make peace with us. Maybe we'll see if they'll just accept. They will not, but they will in a moment. That is almost without doubt. And then it's just a matter of peacing out with Austro-Hungary. They're not the war leader, but they still won't actually accept that peace deal. So we'll just occupy the entirety of their country, and that'll probably change their minds right quick. And then once they're all out of the way, then we only have about 11 war score against the Russians, and they're basically a collapsing state at the moment, so I don't imagine they'll really turn that down. Uh, we could just rush one of these groups over to St. Petersburg, just because we have the capability of doing so. Looks like Persia has decided to see reason. There we go. So that's very nice. Uh, we'll go run this troop over, and get ready to retake Kashmir. Move these guys all down, we don't actually need them on the border, in fact we should probably bring them over to Egypt since we're going to go to war with them at some point in the near-ish future. And we'll just roll all these forces around. Ukraine declared war on the Russian Empire, that's kind of interesting. Uh, at some point I do want us to go puppet Ukraine. Although that may not be something that happens in the near future. Alright, we will also start moving our forces back on the border of the Italian state. In fact, we could just leave our forces in Austro-Hungarian land, and once we declare war on Italy, we could just march across the border. So that's something we could do, and perhaps even should do, when the time is right. Mission to Kashmir was slowed down a little bit, that's kind of unfortunate. Oh, but it doesn't matter, since it's already ready to go. Liberals won, so congrats on the new fascist ruling party, guys. We did it. And I believe since we just clicked that back immediately, we don't even have to worry about changing our taxes or anything like that. Uh, immediately we'll go ahead and start justifying war 
and against the Egyptians will just acquire their last state and then after that will justify on them to annex. Uh, Kashmir, you had a good run as an independent country, but that's basically over. So we'll just roll right on in there, and in fact we'll bring another army just so we can occupy them all at once. Looks like the Russians aren't too pleased with us trying to take over their capital, which is kind of understandable, although also a bit of a pain. Uh, I don't even think we need to bring reinforcements, although that is definitely something we could do. And the Austrians will accept peace with us, we can't add another war goal since we aren't jingoistic enough, but we don't really need anything else anyway. So there we go, we've got all that, that's kind of cool. And there we go, we kicked the Russians out of Armenia, that basically fits most of our borders to what we want them to be. We just need to take Dalmatia to kick the Italians out of there. And if we had enough jingoism, then we would also roll up into Pug Puglia and Campania. Although that's not really something I think we realistically will be able to do. It might be worth trying just because it would be kind of cool. It just requires us to get quite a bit of jingoism, which isn't really unheard of. We'll just have to keep running elections. Uh, but we'll wait. We'll hold off on running another election until just a little bit further on. Uh, probably closer to when we can actually fight again. And uh, yeah, so with the defeat of the Russians, we really don't need to attack them ever again. We've basically taken everything that we want. We'll just move our armies onto the border so that they never really feel like they can get away with attacking us and just move our armies back in general. Uh, the Germans are still incredibly threatening but we don't really have any plans to ever touch them. Uh, the Romanians, we should really get their cores back so that's another war with Austro-Hungary and I do want to puppet Ukraine although we don't have access to them until we push forward and get some cores for our Romanian friends. Alright, so other than all that, we are actually at war with Kashmir, but that's not really a war in any real sense, and then we'll have a year of just kind of sitting about, as really that's it, basically just going to be it. We could probably add Persia to our sphere of influence, no actual reason to do that though. We annexed Kashmir, so that actually worked out very well, and that's pretty close to Alexandrian borders in India. I'd like to eat some of these small states, but the British haven't collapsed their government yet, so that's a little annoying. And who knows, perhaps they never will. Oh, that's the sound of a lot of industry occurring. Let's open all of these factories and probably even go so far as to subsidize them. And we'll just keep rapidly clicking to expand as they all fill. And there we go, our economy is doing just tremendously well, we're the second ranked great power in the world, sixth in industry, second in military, somehow only second. And let's see, we'll just go ahead and build entirely new armies. And let's see, we can build a lot. So we'll build four army groups, maybe even five. Actually, it looks like we can build even more than that. Uh, we'll build 28 groups of infantry, so that's five, six, seven. All right. Oh man, this is some terrible math. This is uh, this is the moment where we realize that I'm not a math major or anything like that. Because okay, every army has four groups of infantry. We're building twenty-eight. That is seven. Okay, I was right the first time. So what do we need? We need twenty-one groups of artillery. So then one, and then twenty. So forty-nine. We'll just start rushing these. Alright, 49, and then we'll get up to 56 with our engineers. And then let's see, we need 16 Dragoons. Wait, no, not 16, that doesn't make any sense. We need 14 Dragoons. And that gets us up to 70. Alright, so there we go. That math was not absolutely horrendous. Although it did take longer than it realistically should have. But that's just math for you, if you're, well, if you're me. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and not pass any of these regulation reforms or anything like that. Uh, we will go ahead and get even more voting. Just do that for the people. Congrats, guys. And, uh, yeah, we're building up our army to a significant degree. That's always a good thing. 
I guess we'll get a little bit more liberals in the upper house since that doesn't really change the beliefs of our people. And we really don't want to put up with any any unforeseen things going on with our electorate. All right, so once we're done fabricating against the Egyptians, we'll go ahead and fabricate against Italy and uh, probably focus on getting some... We'll do an election when we get into war with Italy and hope that we get a jingoistic event. That seems like the best way to go about it. And yeah, then we should be able to declare war on the Ottomans. We should be able to at the end of this year, but uh, it doesn't really matter right now. Ooh. So it looks like... Oh, okay. So it looks as though the Russians are trying to free a state, Ruthenia. So that might be interesting and kind of just abhorrent. So it looks like Eastern Europe is just going to kind of be in a pretty terrible position, what with just all of these weirdly somewhat free states not really achieving anything. And the Poles are fighting both the Austrians and the Russians right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and support our capitalists since we're basically just funneling money into our economy right now. And that's obviously not an ultimately ideal sort of circumstance, but it also isn't that problematic since we are pretty rich as a state. Uh, hopefully we'll start getting any level of dragoons at all in this army before it starts taking just horrendous attrition as it just accumulates various soldiers. Although it doesn't look like any Dragoons are forthcoming, at least not for a while. I wonder what's taking them so long to be built. Hmm. We clearly needed some resource to build Dragoons that we didn't have on hand. And that's somewhat concerning when every other uh, soldier type had all the resources ready to go. You would think that at this point I would have that kind of just on point, but nope, totally don't. Alright, so let's see. This should be good. We'll go ahead and just get enough infantry out of there. And that's two new armies ready and, uh, well, just ready at least. So one area where countries like Germany are going to definitely be more powerful than us for really the rest of time uh, is going to be the fact that they can raise just a tremendous amount of brigades as reserves, whereas we really don't have very much in the way of capabilities for that. We have 86 brigades that we can raise, and that really is just a testament to how few members of our state are actually members of our majority culture group. And majority culture group really isn't the right terminology whatsoever. They're just part of the ruling culture group, I guess. Also, I'm not too pleased with the fact that our forces are going onto these boats, which I think might actually stop one of them from going forward. So that's just kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did stop them. That's inconvenient. All right, so as soon as us, this group gets out of the way, we'll just land the boats to not have to deal with that. Uh, we'll go ahead and do two per state, and we'll just move one to the next to the next and not really push forward electoral reform too quickly. Since we can only really use it to calm our people down once. Or at least once at a time. Alright, we're just about ready to have our war with Egypt. Immediately justifying against the Italians. Go ahead and declare war, only taking Cordofan since it's all that's left. And this should be relatively quick. And they are mobilizing, not that it's really going to matter. It'll just kind of slow down the occupations a little bit and spam us with pop-ups. Alright, but we're nearly there. Just roll on through. Looks like they have some sort of Arab pan-nationalists. That's kind of interesting. I mean, they're also the only Arab state left in the world. Um... Yeah, they really are. I mean, you could make the claim that the Ottomans are somewhat Arabic. You know, I'm kind of tempted to just let those rebels win. I mean, the worst case is that maybe, yeah, Morocco maybe would join them. And that'd be kind of weird. No, we're not going to let them win. That's not a good idea. 
sorry Egypt, as interesting as that might have been, it is just too vital of an area for our state. Alright, when can we go to war against Ethiopia? Not for another three years. Sokoto, not for another year or so. Looks like there's a ton of Americans in French Africa. Okay. Why, though? Because France is attacking Brazil, and they just gave up. Alright, interesting. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so that's basically all there is to that. We will hopefully get Dalmatia fairly quickly. And then we'll go turn around and defeat and annex the Ottomans once and for all. Looks like there are a bunch of rebels going throughout Russia, and we actually still have this army in St. Petersburg for no reason. Unfortunately, I don't think any of the rebels are going to win because the Russians, I presume, yes, they are mobilized. Although they really have a shockingly small amount of forces for a mobilized state. We will go ahead and war subsidize Ukraine and also Poland. Just because we're not really friends of the Russians or the Austrians anyway. Although at this point in the campaign, we really are just at the point of, well, just trying to dominate everything so we don't really have any national friends or anything like that all right so what do we do now well we just kind of wait for our war to be uh, fully justified we should probably be moving our forces around and about over here all right and oh right that's right we had a sort of weird army uh, but we do need those Dragoons. I'm not sure where the remaining dragoon, Dragoons have gone. Although we should be getting more for the uh, for the army any moment now. Unless they were created in anywhere else in the world. Which they very well may have been. Alright, so we'll just raise some more Dragoons. And we'll just raise two groups worth of Dragoons. Uh, we need two more cannons and two more infantry. Alright, so that should be good. And then after that, we will try to build just a ton of airplanes and a ton of tanks. And we'll see if either of those actually happens. And if they do, then we can start building armies based around that. Uh, let's see, navally though, let's start building some Dreadnoughts just because we may as well ensure that our navy is dominant in the world. We can increase our sphere of influence on all of these states we plan on annexing anyway, so we'll probably just avoid that. I guess we could influence Switzerland or something, but I don't actually really want to do that either. Um, yeah. Let's see. Party's work's not illegal. Go ahead and be fascist, you guys. And is there anything else that we really need right now? Not so much. We'll just keep getting our army techs until we've basically got all of them in the world. And luckily we're being quite heavily menaced by those Italians. And that helps us out tremendously. And who knows, maybe we'll even get some tanks and things, and that would be very nice. And let's just go ahead and find our navy, wherever that wound up. And it's just over here, guarding Gibraltar. We'll go bring them over. Uh, we should have another navy somewhere or other. Just a whole bunch of transports. And then this fleet, which is somewhat wounded, but not so much that it should matter all that much. That's a lot of the word much in that sentence, but you know what I mean. All right, so they have 57 ships. Hopefully none of them are high tech. I mean, our nation as well has a whole bunch of very low-tech ships just kind of as holdovers from earlier times, since there's no real reason to get rid of them. Alright, and it looks like that is part of the Italian Navy. We could probably just bring our actual modern ships over there. And we'll see how this turns out. Alright, so, there we go. Uh, we want Dalmatia, and we'll go ahead and just declare war for that right now. We'll also have a snap election. 
Now let's see, our people want universal voting quite badly. Other than that, they don't really want jingoism. So we'll wait a little bit. Let them let them decide that they really want it before we go ahead and give it to them. Oh, looks like the Italian Navy is pretty confident in their abilities. Actually very worryingly confident in really every instance. So that's pretty much what we were hoping to avoid. We'll see if we're able to just kind of rush over there. And we will just charge across the frontier. And just kind of hurdle over. And we'll hope for the best once we get there. Now, interesting is we can't actually see what sort of forces the Italians have directly on the opposite side. Now we can. Alright, and we'll just rush on in, and it looks like it's going very well for us, at least in this most initial stage. And hopefully we get some jingoism events. Our army is actually kind of really forward, arguably, compared to where it maybe should be. Uh, but we have a lot of reserve forces, so we'll just pile them all up behind the lines. And it looks like we're going to have to be on the defensive immediately. But, you know, on the defensive deep inside Italian territory, and that's pretty much the best defensive sort of combat you could have. Alright, let's take a look. We will just bring more of these forces up. And in fact, we could probably just bring this force around and then trap their forces in Venice. And that would probably be very useful. Although we are taking larger casualties than I would have expected. Not really sure what the cause of that is. So that Italian army is trapped, that's great news. Once we defeat it, we'll probably just go around and encircle the rest of their forces. Our navy is kind of underperforming in at least one of the battles, but doing well in the other. There we go, that just obliterated that one Italian army. So we'll just rush around, and this will be a two-part little plan. Just go all around and encircle them, and draw out the rest of our military. And we'll just smash into that army with the entire weight. Oh, oh, okay. We can add a war goal. We'll take Campania if we can. 22 war score. Let's actually look what, look at what that would look like. Alright, not terrible. Add war goal, acquire a state. Campania. Alright, and that'll probably be all that we're able to get from them in this war. We'll probably go after them one more time for Pugia, Puglia. Although I don't foresee that being really anything like an issue. Are we justifying a war on anyone right now? We're not. I've been wasting this time. We're going to conquer the Ottomans. That was pretty terrible on my part. Uh, we also lost one of these naval battles, which means we'll probably lose the other as they come to reinforce. And, you know, obviously there are better things that could happen to us than that. Uh, we'll rush these forces forward. We might not be able to just absolutely obliterate this one Italian army. We'll also start retreating some of our most terribly undermanned groups. And one little fun trick I found is you can actually retreat into your other armies. So that should actually help us out immensely as we'll just retreat up there and then go reinforce and we'll just start piling all of these forces just into this massive war zone and this will probably be the bloodiest war that we fight directly uh, I bet the Great War will prove to have been bloodier however just we didn't really do much of the fighting in that conflict whereas we're definitely going to be doing the well I mean the entirety of our side's portion of the conflict or fighting in this conflict I'll just go ahead and run these troops forward. So yeah, you'll notice that that is just amazingly overpowered. Just absolutely insanely so. Just terribly unfair to the AI. Alright, and that gives us just some ridiculous amount of strategic mobility. We did lose the other naval battle. And we'll just hold these units back and just slam forward with this massive army we've still got going. Poland thinks they can win, so that's very good. Maybe the Ukrainians can as well. 
All right, and our forces are just hurtling forward. Every time they attack us, we're just going to break off one force from one of our various armies and just shovel forward. And that has the bonus effect of basically just eliminating outright all of their armies as they will just simply not be able to evacuate. I'll just go rush up. We don't actually need to reinforce that army with nearly so many forces, but we will reinforce them somewhat. And we'll keep the rest of our troops in reserves. And so yeah, that'll basically just be the absolute obliteration of the Italian military. We'll go roll these forces up along the sides. And we do already have Istria occupied, so that's good. 106,000 Italian forces just obliterated like that. Move this troop backwards and we'll just go to encircle the remaining forces. I accidentally just sent them into that battle which wasn't on purpose. Although it's not really bad either. And you'll notice we're just winning all of these fights. There's not really anything that can be done if you're the Italians at this sort of point in things. And that's pretty good if you're us though. And we'll just keep running around and encircling their forces. We just obliterated that army outright without really any contest. Ottoman Menace is coming right for us. Of course they are. Who could think otherwise in this day and age? All right, and that should obliterate that army in a moment. I would honestly be kind of shocked if they weren't willing to make peace right now or at least in the next couple minutes as we've just done some outrageous damage to their state. And we will move forward and just encircle that army in case it comes to it. Looks like we're technically attacking. They will not accept peace with us and we cannot add any more war goals since our people are already kind of over it. And honestly I think Pug Puglia would be too much war score. So we don't really even want to try uh, passing a reform just to get our people to uh, support another war goal since it would probably just be too, too expensive and we couldn't actually do it anyway so we would just lose that, that little bit of jingoism that we would want to have for later. Alright, and we're just surrounding all these places. Uh, Portugal just accepted the peace of Ukraine, so there we go, we have a big, weird, awful looking Ukraine just jutting out into Russia. And the only way we could realistically defend them is if we went and puppeted them. Although they are apparently in the sphere of Italy, that's not really too much of a problem. Oh my god, actually. We could just do that right now. Uh, do we have access to them? No. Would anyone give us access? No. All right, we'll not do that. Although that would have been neat. We would have to wait now until March of uh, 1929, even if the best of cases occurred, and that's not really something we should bank on. So yeah, we're probably not going to be able to get Ukraine as a puppet state of ours, although that would be very cool. And we should probably just go and obliterate this Italian army. And I would not be shocked if the French came in and attacked them afterwards. Alright, so things are going pretty well. We are building up our navy. That's all those naval sounds. Hopefully you guys can hear them. And hopefully they're not just outrageously loud. Alright, I'm honestly kind of surprised that they haven't given up. And they actually will give up. Alright, so there we go. We have expanded a little bit further still, and we'll just take over this southern portion of Italy, maybe even uh, Sar their version of Sardinia, and that would pretty much fill out everything that we want from them, basically ever. We can go ahead and turn Congo Oriental into a state, and I'm not going to keep any of our forces in our Italian possessions other than maybe one or two groups simply because they're not going to be very helpful for any other wars anywhere else. And most of our wars are probably going to be occurring anywhere else. At least for the near future.
We will load up Romania with a bunch of soldiers just because. And uh, really just try to keep one force on each of our border provinces. Or, you know, at least one force on each of our border provinces with Austria, Hungary. As we are going to probably want to go to war with them in the future, I'm not sure if we actually will or... Well, we, we probably will. It's just not a guaranteed. Alright, and we will actually put one or two armies into our Italian possessions just in case they have revolts. And the remaining five groups, uh, we are going to war against the Ottomans fairly soon, so we'll just load them up on the Ottoman border. Just all throughout the Ottoman border. And it looks like they're actually just going to get caught uh, because they're going to try to go in and out of territory that they're actually allowed to go in and out of. So that's a little annoying, but nothing we can really do anything about at the moment. And it looks as though we are actually managing to get some of our tanks and whatnot, and that is really good for us. Uh, it means we can actually focus on building a tank-based army in a little bit, and that'll be very nice and very helpful for if we get into another great war, or war against another great power. Oh, even more jingoism, that's very nice. Just keep our people jingoistic and ready for war. Good. All right, guys, another great victory for the fascist party. All right, so yeah, that's basically all that. Looks like Piedmontian anarcho-liberals. That's a very interestingly distinct name for that rebellion. And the Ottoman menace. All right, we can go to war against Egypt again in 1928. Uh, we could probably go to warring in Sokoto pretty soon. They are allied to France, and that's a little annoying. Uh, in fact, we should be able to go to war with them pretty much right when we're done fabricating our Cassus Belly against the Ottomans. We can fabricate against them. Uh, let's see. Persia won't be until 1927. And really, other than that, we don't need to take over anyone else to get all of the lands that we want. Uh, we could go into another war against the Austrians, but that's not for a few years down the road. If the Russians get a revolution, then we can just go ahead and start fabricating claims against them immediately. We won't have to wait, and that could be very helpful. Uh, we'll go ahead and put universal voting into effect, and we will actually increase our taxes on the middle class. And we are spending a lot of money on industrial subsidies. That's obviously not ideal. Although we really have enough money to burn at this point. Although that's obviously also not really the sort of sentiment that we should really be encouraging. Or really one that's super appropriate. Now it looks like France is having some issue with rebels, at least outside of their metropole. All right. So, yeah, that's all good news. If we do take anything from Russia, it would probably be Russian Turkmenia. And also maybe, well, if we take anything further, then we'd have to take a lot. So maybe just Russian Turkmenia, and we'll see if we can go for more later on. If we can get Ukraine turned into a puppet of ours, then we'll definitely want to go after more. Uh, until then, though, there's no reason to really overextend, although obviously at this point the concept of overextension is kind of almost a joke in and of itself. Uh, we will go to war for Sokoto. That will almost certainly bring us to war against the French, uh, just because they'd probably honor their alliance, although we really don't know that for absolute certainty, or as an absolute certainty. Although it is a safe bet, I would say. And we can't go to war against Ethiopia yet, and that was really the other state that we wanted to attack. So yeah, it'll be Sokoto and France. Conquest against the Ottomans, justifying against Sokoto. Oh, they've civilized. Alright, well, hmm. That's not ideal. Huh, yeah, I guess I really put that off too long. Um, that's okay, though. Honestly, if Sokoto still exists, that's not really some great detriment to our state. We'll go ahead and conquer the Ottomans right now. Oh, 
All right, and we'll just kind of rush on in, and it's not like they'll be able to do very much about us, which is really just what a what a sad end to the Ottoman Empire. Although I really, it, it's hard to feel too much sympathy for them, seeing as they did just destroy the last Greek-ish empire. So yeah, not with a bang, but with a whimper. So it seems. Just get rid of that one army that did manage to raise up. And there we go, the ancestral evil is gone. It is no more. The Ottoman state is destroyed. If we formed Byzantium right now and released, you know, about two thirds of our empire, it would somewhat make sense. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I I'm kind of happy about that. I don't think I've ever had, I mean, I've never done this well as Byzantium, or as Byzantium. Uh, as Greece in this game. Uh, I've played campaigns as Greece years and years ago, but I never really knew the game as well as I do now, so they never went anything like this. So that's uh, that's really cool. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, let's go man these borders against the French. And hopefully we don't take just an ungodly amount of attrition on the way, though we probably will. We can even pull some troops away from the Russians, since there's no real reason to have so many troops on the Russians, since they're basically just falling into national chaos. Alright, so yeah, great, great times for Greece. Great times for the Empire. Getting all sorts of new cores. Uh, let's see, crises. Everyone's still kind of upset that we've conquered all of the Turks. And let's take a look at something like our demographics, maybe, while we just wait for this to uh, to occur. It looks like we are getting Greek peoples all throughout the area again. So that's very nice. Uh, let's look demographically. We are still mainly Chinese, and then just a little bit less Turkish, and then just a little bit less Greek. We are primarily just a hodgepodge of other cultures. So we're not really much of a cultural unity, so it doesn't really make too much sense that we're becoming fascists. Although at this point we could, well, I don't really want to defund our military for fear that anyone else in the world will attack us. Uh, the Russians have 40 brigades, which I assume are forming some massive circle around St. Petersburg since they are clearly having difficulty maintaining control over their countryside right now. So yeah, not great days for the Russians. Austro-Hungary is weirdly enough holding it together somewhat well, just uh, at least in comparison. I oh, should probably bring even more forces against the French African possessions. Although not too many, because I imagine they will try to leak through Europe. Although we do probably have enough forces. Alright, so we'll just bring the rest of those to bear though, and that will definitely be enough. Alright, Germany backing the Ottomans. Uh, they would not accept a white peace, and literally no one's going to support us, I can almost guarantee. They want to support Germany, Japan wants to support Germany, France wants to support Germany, Italy wants to support Germany. Oh, and they're not going to accept a white peace. Oh, okay. Um... Well, I had said earlier that I was hoping this game would end with a massive war uh, that really puts to test whether or not we are actually uh, conceivably just in claiming that we are an empire. It looks like we're going to have that opportunity to prove that once and for all. Uh, the alternative is that the Ottomans get all of their states with cores which is almost the entirety of the most central portion of our empire. And needless to say, not really something I would like to see happen. Um, hmm. All right, so it's the Italians, the Japanese, the British, and the Germans. And the French will hop on into that too. Uh, on the bright side, that means we won't have to worry about the French intervening in our invasion of Sokoto. Although, as far as bright sides go, that is not very much of one. 
So, if this turns into a war, Ru or, uh, British forces will probably flood through this region and it will turn into a war because we're not just going to give in without a fight and they're not going to give in without a fight either. So it will be a fight. So where do we fight? We could just fight at the very most close to everyone but us. So we can just load these mountain ranges up with soldiers and that's probably a very good idea in some ways. And we could just keep these forces there. Hmm. We probably don't have enough troops if we just do that, but we can just flood in the rest of our forces from the rest of the world as just sort of reserves. Oh, we can create a state in Abu Dubai, so we'll go do that. Okay, so we'll drag a large amount of our forces out of Europe to defend our Asian holdings. We might even just press deep into British India. That could be interesting. Obviously that's not something we're going to do um, this camp or this session. We'll probably just end this session uh, in a few minutes. We won't rush it or anything, but we'll we'll draw it to its uh, sensible conclusion. Austria is only allied to Russia. Russia isn't allied to any of the great powers that will be fighting us. Oh, right, Sokoto might actually join along with the French, although I don't think that's actually how that will work. Okay, so, uh, no solution. Cool. Uh, France isn't really eager to join either side. So, yeah, maybe the French just won't even join. And then we'll have to fight them anyway when we declare war on Sokoto, which we're still planning on doing. Unfortunately, our war justification is held up by this crisis, so that's not great. Uh, once again, though, we only have three states that we need to attack before the end of the game. Uh, maybe four if we attack the Russians again, and yeah, I do want to attack the Russians again. And we will take some land from Austro-Hungary. We will rattle our saber, since there's no real reason to put this off. And yeah, I don't think France will actually join either side as they really don't have enough encouragement to do so. Oh, the UK allied Spain, which I believe is just their way of getting Spain in on this war. Which means the war will either have to end in less than five years, or we're going to have to uh, add the liberation of Egypt from the Spanish as a war goal, which would then be the only war goal we could really pursue in this war. Uh, I do want Puglia. We'll probably also try to take Talimkin and Algiers, and maybe even oh Constantine and Talimkin and Algiers. Maybe just dismantle their African holdings a little bit. Provided... Oh, and France did, of course, join, so... That's something we're going to have to deal with. And they'll not accept the offer. It'll probably cost them a 100% war score to take, you know, everything that they want from us. Hmm. We'll not pass reforms now since we'll need them to basically just keep our people in line over the course of this war. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll get experimental psychology. Kind of wish we had spent more time building up our navy. Probably should have done that. Probably really should have done that. Alright. Uh, yeah. This is going to get pretty intense pretty quickly. Uh, I guess we'll probably end this. Oh, look, Russian rebels. That'll be interesting to see. We can't really just speed time up until that occurs, for obvious reasons. Alright. Well, we won't really fight the war. We'll probably stop this episode right as it begins. Jahor joined us. Ladakh. Romania. And we researched Tinkets. We are fighting. Italy, France, Germany, the UK, a lot of Africa, a lot of Asia, and all of Japan, although Japan hasn't really done anything ever in any of the wars that they were our ally in, so hopefully they don't turn that around. Alright, so we could just invade 
into all of these Asian or all these African holdings, although that really runs the risk of British forces just overwhelming us. I don't really know. I don't think they have that many troops, although that is also just kind of an assumption. We could press forward against the Italians and try to occupy Italy if we pull that off rapidly enough, which we might actually be able to do. Oh, because they don't have any armies at all. If we charge through and set up a defensive line over here, we can just occupy Italy out of the war. Essentially, they can't peace out separately because it is a crisis war. And we do have our forces kind of in position on the British frontier. We'll pull more forces and just pull these guys forward a little bit. That's actually probably good enough where they're at. So that frontier is pretty much on lockdown. I don't think the British can actually achieve anything against us. Uh, if anyone gets military access through Austro-Hungary or Russia, that could be incredibly problematic, although they haven't done so in the previous war. Alright, so we may as well go ahead and create a battle plan while we're just at this. What is line of support? Oh, right, it was when Britain was supposed to be our ally against massive Russian onslaught. Well, that uh, didn't really age well as a plan. So let's see, we'll just create a battle plan over the next few minutes, uh, and it'll be... I know that's really just a lazy name, the Path of Dominance. I'll try to come up with something better before before we end up recording this episode. Uh, essentially, though, what we'll do is we will start off with a massive push. Come on, a massive push up into Italy or up through Italy, which will lead to a defense. We'll kind of see how well that goes. Uh, we'll also launch a bunch of just kind of somewhat less than super well coordinated attacks into Africa to just kind of push back these colonial powers. I'm not sure how far we'll get, but we'll try to get as far as we can. And then in Asia, I'm not really, I haven't really decided yet if we're going to just try to press forward or hold the line. We'll probably hold the line for now. That really isn't all that convenient to look at. So I'll probably just hold the line in Asia. We will press forward in Italy. We'll press forward in Africa. So Africa is going to take the vast majority of our micro just because there's so much land to cover and just a ton of occupations and probably hunting down the various imperial armies roving about just around the continent. Uh, I'm worried that they'll call allies in and turn this situation a little more pear-shaped uh, in what would basically be our worst case scenario what would happen is the Germans would get access and come on let's draw some lines worst case scenario massive German onslaught just slams into our European holdings when we're really just filling into Italy uh, our Navy we're probably not going to use too actively since we did take some pretty heavy losses in that last war and yeah, we don't have very much of a navy at this point, so that's a pretty bad spot to be in uh, just at the start of this war. So what should we do is the question. Well, basically we've planned it out as far as we can. We'll try to keep some reserves in this portion of Austria. So we'll keep a small amount of reserve forces here if Germans start leaking through then we're going to have to make some hard decisions. We'll probably just try to occupy this area. And yeah, we'll see how it all plays out. Um, let's see, that's basically it. The Path of Dominance. Really could have given it a better name, but once again, we'll come up with something over time. Uh, let's see, March of 1927, March of 1928, and we can actually declare war in Spain right now. Or uh, we can fabricate it in Spain right now once uh, once we're done with Sokoto. And May of 1926. Okay, so what we'll do... We might just end up in a prolonged war with Spain. That's probably fine. Uh, we'll declare against them at some point in the future. Probably while this war is still going on so we can occupy them. And then we'll declare war on Egypt and just defeat Egypt. 
and liberate them and then annex all of that and by that point by the time we should be able to finish with that we should have everything else under lock and key all right well we've got a game plan now good thing we smashed the italian army just a few moments ago otherwise this would be significantly more difficult and russia is just in brutal bloody chaos and we've already defeated most of the other great powers the only power that's going to be a tremendous concern is going to be germany and you know we should probably just be spamming all sorts of just aircraft and tanks and we'll just use those to augment the forces that we will already have all right so that's the game plan we have pretty decent borders for now uh, unless we lose this war which uh, if we take a look we actually have only about half the military strength of this alliance arrayed against us and honestly the most horrible thing that could happen is if their navy is so powerful they just cut us off at the sea of marmara and split our nation into two separate nations essentially if that happens we would have to go to war against the russians in order to pour around so who knows that could be very interesting and absolutely terrible uh let's just stop hypo er, um, hypothesizing and in the episode now, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm kind of glad we got this in-game war. But I'm saying that before we fought it, so who knows? Who knows how it'll go? Have a great day.